This video is brought to you by a huge mountain of drugs. Gollum obsessed stalker versus Brion, patron of the Kitsune and Legolas. Uh, that is a turn one commander, which is what we want. This is the one I always mix up where you discard a land and the Chrome mocks you exile something. So yeah, that's fine. Have to get rid of the Blood Chief Ascension, unfortunately, I think, but we'll keep that. Obviously want to be getting down our commander as soon as possible in this deck because we want to be hitting them from turn two onwards. Do draw on our first turn, so yeah, we still want to be swinging in on turn two, so let's go for the land. Chrome Mox. Not too sure about Blood Chief Ascension in this deck anyway because we'll be draining our opponents on their turn and we want to be gaining life on our turn to trigger the Golem, so I'll have to try that another time apparently. Play out the Golem Obsessed Stalker. We see a turn 1 Esper Sentinel from the Spirit player. And then it's a Sol Ring from the Boros player that allows the Esper Sentinel to draw its first card. Following that up with a Thornbite Staff on turn 1. Okay, and we draw into an Urborg, which isn't the worst. So I'm thinking that they're going to not block with the Esper Sentinel. Although we can get through with the Trailblazer's Boots at some point, I hope. Maybe they've got a lot of basics in the deck. I'm thinking we maybe offer up the trade between these two and then we can always go for the Mithril Coat. Does potentially mean we take a turn off of actually getting through with the Golem, but we can do it later. We don't actually have any life gain to make use of at the moment. So, yeah, let's go down the middle and see if we can get rid of this Esper Sentinel. All right, and we're fine with the outcome either way. We managed to hit our opponent, so that's really good. Uh, if this is some kind of elf deck, then we'll have to be careful of tokens over here as well. The Legolas is obviously a one-powered creature as well. I was hoping that we'd get through with Skulk, but you obviously can't guarantee it, which is why we've got things like Trailblazer's Boots in here for a means of redundancy. Just going to hold up the Mithril Coat for some indestructibility at instant speed. The Esper Sentinel hitting the Boros player, and Sacred Foundry being shocked down for the Breon player, so we have to assume that it's the commander coming into play. And it is Breon's Stout Arm hitting the field, so in response to that, I'm going to go for the Mithril Coat now. And that's the first non-creature spell we've played this turn, so that will draw Esper Sentinel a card, hopefully not into a means of exile. And that did land and attach to our commander, so we now have an indestructible Skulk Golem. Alright, and there's a Defile, so... Yeah, as long as we keep making swamps, we should be alright. Probably drawing with the Night's Whispers the thing to do here, to dig a bit deeper into our deck. Don't see much harm in throwing down an Urborg though. And I am worried about some elf tokens. Still not sure what Legolas is doing here, but I'm worried about elf tokens, maybe mana dorks. So we'll swing in with the Golem now, because I'm quietly confident we'll be able to get through to Breon quite easily. Obviously have to hit all of our opponents at least once with Golem. So that successfully goes through. We've just got Breon to hit at this point. We'll cast the Knight's Whisper. Yeah, I think we're fine to pay into the Esper Sentinel here. I can't see myself... If we got into an Arcane Signet, then that would be good to get that down and hold up Defile, but yeah, we're fine to pay it here, I think. Just hoping for another Swamp to have the Defile be able to get rid of the Breon. Uh, we've now got a combo in hand in Bolas' Citadel and the Aether Flux Reservoir, which I'm not too eager to get going, because I think it'd be a pretty boring way to end the game, but needs must on Magic Online sometimes, it depends what spikes you go up against. See more fast mana in the form of Sol Ring from the Legolas player. There's also a Tyrite Sanctum available. And in comes the commander, so we've hit him just in time because wouldn't have necessarily been able to get through the Legolas easily. Not without one of our equipment in either the boots or the thief's tools. But obviously we don't want to waste our time casting those if we don't have to. Alright, an Archivist of Ogma being flashed in for the Mono White player. Angel of Vitality being cast during the main phase, still no ramp for the white player, but sticking at seven cards in hand. A Thousand Year Elixir for the Breon, and Esper Sentinel obviously triggering here. And that is paid for by the Boros player. And then throwing out a Skull Clamp with nothing to equip it to, no means of equipping. If they were to be able to equip that to Breon, it would have put its power at, or its toughness at three, and we could have gone for the Defile, but... They obviously would have drawn cards to that. Now Breon swings in towards us, so we'll hit them back in kind next turn. Okay, means of card draw or ramp or 
Our land would have been nice here, that is a Warlock class. So we could go for the Thief's Tools and make a treasure token with that, but I don't think we particularly need it at the moment. So maybe it's just best setting up the Warlock class. We can pay two for the class and two for the Defile. Alright, so we'll go in down the right. We're not going to be able to get rid of Breon until they put that Skull Clamp onto it, unfortunately. But they don't have any creatures to sacrifice yet anyway, and we do need to be careful of this Legolas because... It's going to start fighting things all over the place. Maybe we don't care about that while we've got Indestructible though. Maybe we should let them do that. But we have successfully landed damage on all of our opponents now, so... All we ultimately have to do is start gaining life. Argument to be made for getting down the Aetherflux Reservoir, but... I want to see some removal out of my opponent's hands first, preferably. Pay the tax on the Asper Sentinel. And then, again, we're just holding up the Defile, still only doing minus three, minus three at the moment. Scale of Heights is the first targeting spell, put a plus counter on it, gain two life, and you can play an additional land, and draw a card. Paying into the Asper Sentinel, plus counter goes on Legolas thanks to his own ability as well. Not worthy that that would make it so that Gollum could get through here. It's obviously not relevant now. Ordeal of Nylea. Whenever the creature attacks, put a plus counter on it, and if it has three or more, you sack this, and it is a ramp spell after that. So this is now a 4-7 with reach. Legolas turning in sideways, which means he will have to sacrifice the Ordeal of Nylea because it gets that fourth plus counter on it. And uh, searching the library for the lands will trigger the Archivist of Ogma. And it is us that's taking the damage to the Legolas. And there is the Mana Door that we were worried about previously, Lanoir Elves. Now seeing a non Xanax for the Mono White player, so getting down the Golem that quickly is definitely relevant by the looks of it and yeah we're just taking all the damage here apparently um i'll wait and see what the breon player does before i use my defile but i am going to have to blow something up here by the looks of it because we're not being too lucky on getting into the ramp unfortunately soul guide lantern being played into esper sentinel and breon allowing him to draw a card so once every piece of mana this turn apparently and exiling from our graveyard the knight's whisper then drawing a card with the lantern. Alright, and the Skull Clamp going on to the commander, so if they swing in at us, we can respond with a Defile now. Activating the Thousand Year Elixir to untap the Legolas for whatever reason. And then just tapping out and passing, so... Didn't have enough mana for the Thornbite Staff there. We'll see again where he swings in. Yeah, coming in towards us, so... We do have a means of swapping life totals around in this deck. But... Until we get into that stuff, we need to stem the bleeding here, so a Defile. And paying into the Esper Sentinel, the Breon will draw a couple of cards here, but obviously we'll have to recast his commander. So maybe that will make our opponents think twice before they swing in at us. Okay, Plum the Forbidden, we can do it instant speed as well, but I think we just have to go to level 2 on the Warlock class here, because we're missing lands. Alright, and we have a couple of cards on top of our library, along with an Infernal Grasp. Uh, a couple of lands on top, I should say. So, a Swamp goes into our hand. Play the Swamp. And we're just holding up the Plum the Forbidden now, I think. Which is likely just going to be draw a card and lose a life. Going a bit too slow for my liking. Obviously hold back Gollum as a blocker now that we've hit everyone. That should keep us from losing too much life. Although the green player could get trampled next turn. Not worthy that there is a Rogue's Passage over here now with a surplus of mana, so <laughs> they've got, like I said, trample anyway, so Rancor going onto the Legolas and paying into the Esper Sentinel tax. So Legolas is now an 8-9 with Reach and Trample, and we've already taken 5 commander damage to it. And this time going in at the white player, so worried about losing his commander maybe. And let's try something a little bit Trixie here. I'm in the blocking phase and I'm gonna let my opponent see that I'm tapping down for mana in response even though we're not actually gonna do anything. And then untap, maybe they'll assume that we thought they were attacking in at us. So that might make our opponents think, if they're paying attention, that we've got some kind of interaction in hand. Alright, yeah, and they are responding now. Tyrite Sanctum putting a plus counter on this. Uh, they could have... Oh, they have to make it a god first, so next turn they can Pay four, tap, sack, make that indestructible. Runetail Kitsune. And they have exactly 30 life as it happens. 
So that is prevent all damage that would be dealt to creatures you control. So maybe a Blasphemous Act from Brion would be relevant there. Not worthy really Brion's in the bin, which is surprising. Maybe has a uh, Karmic Guide or something like that in hand. Anyway, the Kitsune being flipped around here. Not worthy that everyone's got an on-basic land for our Trailblazer's boots now. And the Esper Sentinel goes into the right against Brion. Surprised that they didn't swing in with the Angel of Vitality. Um, yeah, there's no flyers for them to worry about, really. Would have thought they'd deal extra damage while they can. It does assume that they keep the Kitsune in place so that they make really good blockers. And yeah, that's exactly what they have, a Karmic Guide to fish the Brion out of the bin. And it will be able to be activated straight away thanks to the Thousand Year Elixir. And Skull Clamp going on the Karmic Guide, that will likely be sacrificed next turn because they can't pay, or well, they can pay the Echo cost, but no one ever does. Okay, decided to sacrifice it now by the looks of it. Brion going to point the damage directly at us and draw two cards to the clamp. Alright, so going through to the end step, we'll go Plum the Forbidden, not going to sacrifice any creatures because we want to keep our indestructible golem in play, which means we only draw one card and lose one life. I think that's the first time I've ever done this with Plum the Forbidden, usually get much more value out of that card. Gets us into Haunt of High Tower. We're drawing some expensive stuff here, it's not what I want to be seeing to be honest. Alright, a land isn't the worst, so do we just try our luck with a Bolas' Citadel? I think getting Summoning Sickness away from Haunt of High Tower won't be the worst. But are we going to keep the Haunt of High Tower in play when Brion is doing Brion stuff? I know, if I go Bolas' Citadel here, we're going to see a land on top, aren't we? So maybe we set up Aetherflux Reservoir ready for a Bolas' Citadel next turn, because players are looking in our direction anyway. Because, yeah, I really don't think we're going to keep the Haunt of High Tower. We need haste, really. So I'm going to go for the Aetherflux Reservoir. And I will pay for the Esper Sentinel tax. So we're going really, really slow here, as you can all tell. But hopefully we'll be able to dig ourselves out of this. If we can survive another turn or two. Only problem is that this really encourages the Legolas to swing in at us. But I dare say they might have been anyway. Missing yet another Golem Obsessed Stalker trigger. Um, we'll see if Legolas can deal lethal commander damage to us next turn because I'm going to do something at the end of the turn. Maybe Return of the Wildspeaker or something like that. Then deciding not to do something maybe. Yeah, just untapping that five mana and going through to his turn. Sixth Sense is a means of card draw. Obviously gets a plus counter as well. So Legolas, now a 10-11 with Trample. And you have to assume they'll want to hold up 4 mana for the Tyrite Sanctum, effectively losing 5 mana there. So, assuming that, they'll only have 3 green mana left this turn. And yep, Legolas coming in towards us as soon as they see the Aetherflux Reservoir, which is probably a good idea. Might as well block here and not gain an additional point of commander damage, not that I think it'll be relevant. Maybe the life will be relevant with Bolas' Citadel in play. Legolas up to three cards in hand, thanks to the Sixth Sense. And uh, there we see a Hardened Scales, which is probably the card they just drew into. Nykthor's Shrine to Nyx for the Mono White player has a decent number of white pips, so that's some good ramp for them. Making six white mana. And there is a Mass Calcify, alright, I'm not against that. Um, the Legolas... Okay, it is non-white creatures. Didn't they have a Brion in play over here? The Brion would have survived that, so I don't know why this guy's scooping. Uh, this is going to get indestructible as well, thanks to it being a god, so... All they've really done there is pay a punch of mana into getting rid of a mana dork. I mean, they forced them to make the Tyrite Sanctum play. Okay, and that player makes a shame scoop as well. Awesome. So those two are getting banned. So we just have to hope that we can do some damage with this Bolas' Citadel now. At least we didn't take damage during the mono white player's combat step. If we see a land here, we're not going to play it. Okay, a wound reflection would have been nice, but it's less life that we take to Bolas' Citadel at least. And this is exactly why I put these combos in the decks, because sometimes you just don't have any luck and you're in real dire straits. And you just have to play uh, combinations of cards like this. So there we see a Basilisk Collar, which, which is a nice minimal amount of life gain and straight into an infinite combo. We can draw our entire deck with Sensei's Divining Top here. So cast that. And I'll try and get my opponent with the Golem Trigger. 
because it's not exactly a, um, a satisfying win here, I don't think. Yeah, so our opponent sees that and scoops. Um, if this game is the one you see, then it's the best of a bad bunch, so I apologise for that. Like I said, don't really like winning with Bolas's Citadel and Flux Reservoir, because we've done it multiple times on the channel, and it's um, pretty played out for people all over the Commander world, I would imagine. But this is a life gain deck, and it was actually our only means of life gain throughout the entire game as it happens, so we had to play to our outs. We can see cards like Nighthawk Scavenger in the deck, and if we can get into haste and protection, Haunt of High Tower can be very, very good as well. But just wasn't that kind of game, unfortunately, so we'll try again in another video, but hopefully you all enjoyed this one. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching. Golem Obsessed Stalker versus partners Akiri and Ikra Shadiki, Rhea Iver and Rionya. Uh, okay, we've got a turn one commander, but no other mana really. Mm, Mask of Memory could help us here, so I'll risk it, I think. We do really want to get this commander down on turn one. Just a tap land from the partner player. We draw into an expensive Noxious Gear Hulk, unfortunately, so... Maybe get rid of that here. Now, getting rid of the Wound Reflection probably makes more sense. So, Chrome Mox triggers when it comes into play. Put a Wound Reflection underneath that. And we can cast ourselves a Golem. Then hopefully we can get into a land next turn and play and equip the Mask of Memory so that we can start hitting lands and or card draw and ramp, things like that is what we're very eager for at the moment. Alright, a Leonin Elder on turn 1 for Akiri. I was going to swing in over here because I'm worried about mites over here and smaller creatures here. Like there could be a 0-3 in the way of our commander, but... Yeah, now we've got this thing to block us. Alright, new Bolas is Citadel, so... Yeah, just going to have to swing in with Gollum, unfortunately. I don't think we're going to have the best of luck this game. Swing down the middle at the rear Ivor. We do have redundancy in the deck, like Trailblazer's Boots, to help get the Golem through. But we really want to be fixing our mana as best we can, of course. As is the case in every game of EDH. So we'll just play ourselves the Mask of Memory and not equip that. Hopefully we'll have our commander in play still next turn. A Humble Defector we can still get through with the Golem, thanks to Skulk. Yeah, and I'm always wary of partner players. It always seems to be a very powerful deck when it's partners. And we're seeing the... Foil Urza Saga, which suggests that as well. Although Savvy Hunter means that it might be a fun food deck, so it'll be interesting to see what this player is doing. Okay, and there's a Black Market Connections. If we could actually get into lands, then that wouldn't be a bad draw, but I have to go Mask of Memory for one mana and likely do nothing else this turn other than drop a land. So we'll skulk our way over to the left. And that triggers the Mask of Memory, so we'll draw two and discard one. Gets us into a land, Exsanguinate is completely useless here, so we'll get rid of that. Throw down a Swamp, going down to six cards in hand, and yeah, we remain a turn behind. But we would have been even further behind if we hadn't gone for the equipment there, because next turn's draw would have been this, and that's why digging down into your library with card draw is so important. Professional face breaker now for the mono red player. And now the 2-1 Humble Defector hits us. Played a few games with Gollum, haven't had the best of luck with it so far. I thought it was going to be quite a quick deck. But um, yeah, people seem very, very scared of the Obsessed Stalker, so hopefully we'll be able to show why they're so worried about it. Paladin Atonement now would have been able to block the Gollum. Only a matter of time before it gets a plus counter on it, though. As a Saga deciding to make a Construct, so only one artifact in play at the moment, but that's another means of blocking our commander. Okay, a Deadly Rollick isn't terrible. Can potentially punish an opponent for that, because I'm assuming the red player is going to keep coming in at us. We're going to have to swing in at him this turn. So we'll do that first, see if we can... If I can get into a land, I'll probably go for the Sangromancer. Would have potentially taken advantage if it wasn't for the Construct token here. I would have maybe wasted the Deadly Rollick on this to get the damage through here eventually. But ultimately, drawing with the Mask of Memory is what is going to potentially keep us in this game. And there's another swamp. So, uh, yeah, maybe keeping hold of the Crick is really going to keep us in this. Yeah, I think we get rid of Ugin there because we're just not going to get to the Ugin anytime soon. The only reason that Crick might do some good for us is, one, it's life game, but 
Also, we've got a lot of black things in hand. So, drop the swamp. Do we just throw out the crick now? Be a half-decent blocker for us, and... don't think anyone's got removal in hand, or they would have used it on the golem, potentially. So, let's cast ourselves a crick, son of Yorgmoth. Rionia Fire Dancer into play now. So, I'm wondering if we allow them through to combat or not, because they're just going to hit us with the face breaker anyway. They haven't cast any other instants or sorceries, though. Okay, there's a Ryle. So... We can actually counter this. If it doesn't hit the creature, it'll fizzle and they won't draw a card. So we can kill two birds with one stone here. We want to get rid of the face breaker anyway. So Crick gets a plus counter on it. Meaning it'll gain us more life next turn, hopefully. And I'm hoping Rionia was going to go after the professional face breaker. They'll still be able to get copies of Humble Defector. So there we go, getting a couple of copies of the Humble Defector. They can draw two cards and then have an opponent gain control of it, but obviously that will get exiled at the end of the turn. And they can swing in at us with creatures if they want to, deciding not to. So definitely just want to take the card draw, apparently. Yep, having us gain control of the token, which we won't make use of. Some nice tech with Rionia. So they go up to eight cards off their humble defector, but not allowing them to ramp with the face breaker. Inventor's fair for the Orzov player. So, Rhea Iver entering play for the first time. At the beginning of the main phase, we see another construct from the Urza Saga. And then they're going to trade this out for a Sol Ring, most likely, I would have thought. And yeah, we see Sol Ring from our opponent. Having to tap down a lot of colours, though. Turn 5, and only 3 lands in play at the moment. But still able to go for a killer service. So, making 3 food tokens there. And that triggers the Leonin Elder a bunch. Then a 6-6 six, six swings in towards the red player. Alright, amazingly, we have been allowed to untap with the Crick, so... Vampiric Shooter can take a land off the top of our library. Not going to go for... I do have Aether Flux Reservoir in the deck, but I'm not going to go for that because... It's for when we're in Dire Straits in this deck. I don't really like using that combo, if I can help it. It's not particularly interesting. So let's swallow up some life here, pay 3 generic mana into getting down Abolus's Citadel. And we do still have a land to make, a plus counter on Crick, everyone's tapped out so we should gain some life from that this turn. If we can get the Leonin out of play we can hit with the Golem over there hopefully. We can clear cards off the top with the Mask of Memory as well which is noteworthy. Alright there is an Infernal Sovereign so we're going to draw some cards here apparently. Going down to 20 life. And there is a Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. So we'll cast ourselves a Veto. There's a land on top. So we'll draw into the land with the Infernal Sovereign. We lose a life. There's an extra Planar Lens. Can help us out a bunch this turn, I would have thought. Probably tutoring for a means of swapping around our life totals is going to be a good idea. We're going to need 9 life in order to go for the Profane Transfusion, so uh, we lose a life, draw into a Feed the Swarm to get rid of an enchantment, and we obviously lost 3 life to the extra Planar Lens as well. A Thief's Tools we're not really bothered about. Extra Planar Lens gets rid of a Tap Land, and it will gain a life for the Leonin Elder as well, because it's an artifact. Alright, so we lose 4 life to the Vampiric Tutor if we go for Exium Mana. And we'll lose a life to the Infernal Sovereign as well. So maybe gaining some life with Crick first is going to be a good idea. Um, yeah, we'll waste a mana here, I think he's fine. Lose a life to the Infernal Sovereign, drawing into the Thief's Tools. And another plus counter goes on the Crick. There's a Jet Medallion, which would have been nice to get into, but I don't suppose it matters at this point. Uh, Profane Transfusion is going to be a nice amount of life gain for us. And then we definitely don't want to draw a card this turn, so I'm not going to cast any spells, play any lands, or swing in with the Golem. All I want to do here is gain life to the Crick. And I don't want anyone sacrificing blockers in response, because that will switch off the lifelink. So, 7-7 seven, seven Crick straight down the middle. Don't think anything can be sacrificed here. So, managing to hit our opponent, we will gain 7 life, and the Veto will trigger... Um, we'll just point that at the red player, because I'm going to swap life with this um, player over here, who has 50 life available. Then we'll play straight off the top the Profane Transfusion. 
targeting the 50 life player and ourselves because we want to swap life there of course so we go down to seven then down to six with the infernal sovereign and the sovereign will draw us into villis broker of blood which is obviously really good with crick got a combo available to us in exquisite blood and veto as well i don't have sanguine bond in this deck all right so that player goes down to six we go up to 50 veto will trigger and we'll just get rid of the red player here because whenever you swap life with this it does count as life gain so managing to whack that player for whatever the difference was um that would have been 44 wouldn't it i think so getting rid of that player we'll drop ourselves a swamp that will draw us with the infernal sovereign as well as lose us a life okay a nighthawk scavenger might as well play that off the top more plus counters on Crick will draw us into a Mana Crypt with the Sovereign. This demon doing a hell of a lot of card draw for us. Yep, so that player deciding to scoop is fair enough because I think we've got our opponents here. I'll pass it through with the Nykthos on top so that we can see the Golem trigger go off. And there we go, only saw it for a brief second there, but because we gained so much life to the Profane Transfusion, even if someone hadn't died to that, they would have died to the Golem trigger because, like I said before, that does count as life gain. So even though we didn't hit the other player, we still got to knock him out of the game there by swapping their life with them. And that is how the deck is supposed to run. So two quick games there. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. And if you want to see more from Gollum, Obsessed Stalker, then you can let me know. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.